Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna show you how to export videos for YouTube directly out of Adobe Premiere Pro and the best export settings to choose. And I'm gonna use a resource directly from YouTube that gives you some of the numbers and from my own experience of exporting over 800 videos for YouTube and using Adobe Premiere Pro for over 10 years as a professional editor. So I'll show you all that in this video. And I'll put the links in the description below this video for some of the resources. If you don't have Adobe Premiere Pro, for example, I have the free trial link below this video and the link to the Google page, the YouTube page that shows you all the numbers we're gonna go over. But I'll show you each one and explain the process step by step. Let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and export our video for YouTube. Here I am inside of Adobe Premiere. This is my timeline that I finished editing. So this has some video, it has a lot of screen capture, it comes back to video, it has some graphics and so on. In order to export this, I usually put an in point and an out point on my timeline. So I'm gonna press the plus sign up here and go to the end of my timeline. And I usually just use the keyboard shortcut O to put this out point here, and I usually do that in the beginning of my timeline. So it only exports from the in point all the way to the out point. And if I have other footage here, it will ignore that. So that's a great way to make sure you export just the area you want. Now, with the sequence selected here, I'll go up to here, File, and I'll go down here to Export, and I wanna choose Media. It also has a keyboard shortcut on Mac and PC. And this is the page that I really wanna walk you through. And I'll put a link to a different page in the description, this page. And this page is from the YouTube help page, but it gives you a little bit of overview of the recommended upload encoding setting. Now I'm gonna show you all these inside of Premiere, but just for reference, you could come here and look at some of these. MP4 is a container, for example. Video codec is H.264, and bit rate is what we really care about. So let's go back to Premiere so I could show you all these step by step. The first thing is format. So I need to change format here first. So I usually choose H.264. Now H.264 has been the go-to compression for movies for a long time, for maybe 10 years or longer here using Adobe Premiere Pro. The container was MP4. If you look back at the YouTube page, it says container MP4. Now this H.264 by default will be MP4. So we don't actually have to worry about that. So change format to H.264. Under preset, let's go ahead and drop this down. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see a couple of different YouTube settings here that we could choose. So I'm gonna actually choose these and we'll make a couple of tweaks after that. You have YouTube 1080p and then you have YouTube 4K. Now, depending on how your footage was shot, you wanna choose either 4K or 1080p. In my case, I know my camera shoots in 4K and my screen capture on my iMac was 4K, so I'm gonna choose the 4K option. So let's select that. Now, a couple of things are gonna change if you choose 1080 or 4K. Your width and the height will change if it's 4K or 1080p. So you don't have to touch that, just leave everything as is. The only thing I'm gonna change on this page, if you scroll down, is the bit rate setting. And again, this depends if you're on 1080p, it's gonna be a different number, and 4K is gonna be a different number. So let me show you 4K first. Right now it's set to 40, and it's set to one pass. But if I select this, there's another option for two pass. This is what I like to select, is two pass. That means Adobe Premiere will go through your video two times. It will give it two passes for the best possible results on the output of the video. And you have a target bit rate, you have a maximum bit rate for more advanced graphics, for example. So let's go back to that other page I showed you. And this is where we're gonna get our number here. So for 4K video, it's recommended 35 to 45 for your bit rate. And for higher frame rate footage, is recommending even higher than that. Now, most of the time, I either record my video at 24 or 30 frames, I edit in 24 or 30 frames, and I export in 24 or 30 frames. So this is what I need here for 4K quality. For 1080p, it's recommending only 8-bit, and for higher frame rate, 12-bit. So look at the type of footage you have to work with and come and put these numbers in. So I'll go back here, and I'm gonna change my target bit rate to what it recommended, which was 35 and I'll go ahead and change my maximum to 45, so it'll never get higher than that. And it's gonna work between 35 and 45. If 
I go back to this page, that's exactly what I had. You will see your frame rate up here too somewhere. Over here, frame rate is grayed out, so 24 or 23976, which is often called 24 frames. I'm gonna leave that alone. Everything is set, this is all I need to do. Now, if you're going to YouTube, I will leave use maximum render quality unchecked. But if you're using this outside of YouTube too, you could check this on. So a lot of times when I do this for my video production company and go to television, for example, I do check this on. Now down here, you could see your file size. Now this is over three gigabytes, but it's a relatively long video. It's about 13 minutes. So if that seems too big for you, or if you're worried about your hard drive space, you can knock these numbers down. So if I went down to 25, for example, you could see it's now 2.3 gigabytes or 2300 megabytes. That's how much it reduced the file size. So I usually care about quality. Hard drives are relatively inexpensive now, so I leave these exactly like I want. Now, remember, if you go to HD, let me choose the HD option here. You're gonna get 1920 by 1080, but you need to come down here and change your bit rate. Again, we'll change to two pass, and this time we'll only go to eight, which is what it recommended on that page. And let's go back to this page to see what the maximum is and it's 12. I'll leave that to 12. This doesn't matter all that much because this is gonna change depending on the footage that it's working with at that moment. So you could have a big range here. You could even really raise this up if you have some fancy graphics and you're worried about those not looking so great. You could just raise this up, but the target one is what we really care about. And that's what I use that guide from YouTube to set. Once you're done, you could change the output name. So I could select this right here to change the name of the file. I could change that up here. MP4, you could see that was the container that is selected. So that's by default selected. And I could save my destination. So if I'm going to my desktop, I'll know exactly where that is. Or I could use the external hard drive here to organize it a bit better. I'll press save here. And all I have to do now is down here, press export. And you could see for HD, the file size is much, much smaller, only 700 megabytes compared to the 3.2 gigabyte file we had in the 4K option. So that makes a big difference, especially with this lower encoding. And you could see this is gonna give it two pass. So it is going to take a little bit longer, but the quality turns out a whole lot better than if you just did a one pass. But if you are in a rush, you could go ahead and do a one pass, or if your computer is slow, you could go ahead and do a one pass. And that's it. It's gonna appear on your desktop as a MP4 file that you could just go ahead and upload to YouTube. Thanks so much for watching this video. For the next video, I recommend you watch how to properly put your videos on YouTube, because if you don't do that step correctly, this step doesn't help you all that much. In the next step, you need to worry about your titles, your description, your tags. I cover all of that in the next video from uploading over 800 videos on YouTube and really figuring out how to do that step. And I have a full checklist for it too. So watch that video next. I hope you found this one useful. Please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.